I am joined with Gilbert Patton Elliott and Matilda Bose Wong uh, of Bring the Boy Back Home, which has been nominated as a finalist in our drama category at Bunting for Shorts 2021. How are you both? Awesome. Good, Good, thank you. Yes, how are you going? <laughs> yeah, not too bad, thank you. Um, <laughs> so for those watching this that uh, don't know who you guys are, do you want to introduce yourselves and a little bit about how you got into filmmaking in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Gilbert. Um, I'm initially from Auckland, New Zealand, but I'm living in Wellington, which is the capital. Um, and I've just been interested in film since I was very young um, and then studied it at university and then did a Master's of Fine Arts at Creative Practice in Filmmaking um, uh, just last year, two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Hard to keep. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, um, our, my, well, our final, one of our final projects was Bring the Boy Back Home um, for our course, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, and um, I'm Matilda. Um, I probably got into, I was always really interested in film as a kid. Um, but never really realized that I could actually do it myself. <laughs> um, so like a lot of um, young women, I kind of just was mates with people. And then um, all of the boys that were making films were like, oh, can, can you like join in? Because we kind of need to have some female characters. So, <laughs> please act, yeah, so please. <laughs> yeah, by chance, but then, um, yeah, I actually ended up loving it. And then, um, yeah, pretty much the same path. Um, I grew up in Auckland as well, then have been living in Wellington and we did masters together um, after studying film in undergrad. And um, yeah. What is it about filmmaking that fascinates you guys? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think like telling stories and yeah. uh, also like, I think the um, group experience, like yeah, the working the as a team is actually, I think mm. I've enjoyed that. Aspect, good. yeah, um, and yeah. I think not only the storytelling, but also like the fact that it's a medium that it's an it's an art medium that also has the power to change a lot. Yeah. You know, it's 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 um, often the zeitgeist of you know our times. So I think it's really important to have those um, reflections on our screens. Mm -hmm. And then speaking of change, then um, bring the boy back home. Obviously has a lot of social issues within it um, that affect mainly university age students and obviously upwards as well. Um, what was the, the thinking behind showing that in such a, such a strong light uh, in the film? Mm. Well, I think I definitely, it was something at the time I was thinking about a lot as a student, um, if you go into my last year about, um, I don't know, just at that age um, is quite a vulnerable time for people in universities. Um, mm. And there's also the drinking culture element, which um, is a big thing in New Zealand <laughs> and and probably in the UK as well. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and and like everywhere yeah, for young people. Yeah, most places have a big drinking culture. Um, Certainly in New Zealand, there's um, the element of like the binge drinking yeah. as well. Mm. And I think um, the, the issues around like male responsibility and that sort of thing that's covered in the film I think um I just wanted to show it from not necessarily a male perspective but um just um putting a male in the focus of the film um to bring attention to some of the issues to that, understand their yeah. role in those issues yeah. kind of thing yeah and I think as well like for, from my perspective when Gilbert asked me to kind of join on for the project I felt like I could contribute a lot with my own perspective as being a young woman who's experienced a lot of these things. And um, mm. I think it's really important to shine light on that and show like actually how horrendous and traumatizing it can be for a young woman um, in, in that kind of university, young culture age where kind of no one really knows themselves yet. We're all still developing yeah. at the same time and um, it's easy to get caught up in you know, other stuff. Yeah, and it all it all intertwines. I think the drinking culture and then the kind of lad culture, and then there's you know, um, and then it sort of spirals, doesn't it, yeah. into the into the issues so, that you guys present. Yeah. yeah, and also I think like the kind of hall or like dorm yeah. culture as well. 
I definitely think is actually really dangerous. <laughs> yeah, we both went to university halls and had quite different experiences. And yeah. I think that definitely helped form the sh shape of the film. Yeah, and, the and definitely like, because this time now, there's heaps of students in the city, all the fresh first years are out and about and like mm. settling into their halls. And it's just, I feel like I'm getting this kind of anxiety of like, oh, there could be some really bad things to come. And I really hope mm. that, you know, you are protected and that you've got a good group of friends and that you've got good like RAs or whoever around you so that you feel supported and not alone in it. Because it can get, it's very easy, I think, to get swept up in everything and then just Definitely. lose yourself a bit. It's one of those issues that's never like formally talked about too much really but yeah it affects so much of populations around the world and yeah. I think for me this is one of the first films I've seen where that's a big forefront issue but within the film I find it really interesting that it's not ever explicitly mentioned as if it's just from that perspective of you can tell exactly what's going on here and what's happened was that very deliberate yeah, I think so. I think we wanted to focus on how Dom, the main character, deals with it rather than... Um... Yeah, it's the aftermath yeah. because mm. it's so much more than... When things like this happen, it's so much more than the event itself. It's it's yeah. everything that happens afterwards yeah. and how we deal with it. Mm. Yeah, and and I think, um, yeah, not focusing on the issue itself wasn't... I don't, I don't think it was necessary. Um, I think people understood what was... Yeah, yeah, there's no need to have a drawn out, explicit, horrible, traumatizing scene. Um, no. We can mm. apply it in different ways with storytelling. Yeah. Um, and I think also it kind of adds to that aspect of the kind of taboo of like, we, we're still not as a culture very comfortable with talking mm. about issues of sexual assault and rape. You know, it's not something that people explicitly really want to say yet. Um, so I think it was that in my in my eyes that was kind of like a reflection of that of how we kind of tiptoe finding a bit of a balance between really saying it and then saying it to an appropriate yeah then also kind of for, for our audience as well like i don't really want to re-traumatize or trigger someone yeah I want people to be able to experience the film um you know no matter what they've been through and kind of understand those reflections that we're trying to show um rather than just have it be too hard to watch for some people yeah and i think the scene obviously the scenes were at the start with uh, dom dancing away obviously had a got nice comedy element element to the film as well but at the same time you get that lovely um flip side of um jen walking down the street uh and clearly being affected by it but i think for me when i watched it and i know a lot of the people in our committee when we watched it um in a meeting not that long ago was the bike scene where the issue then really comes to light. Um, what was the kind of inspirations behind that scene in particular? Was it the scene when they're riding on the bikes or after just on the half bike? Uh, riding on the bikes and then just after yeah. when obviously she notices. Uh, there's a bit of a... Yeah, uh, I think... A I moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think at that stage, Jen's caught up in the kind of fun element of the night. <laughs> and mm. the boys are you know being silly on the bikes and it's all feels quite good and you know it's yeah, kind of the young the best thing about being young you know mm. yeah being silly <laughs> and being yeah. a student out in, in town um and then i think um once she is reminded of that experience that she had um i think it puts everything into perspective a little bit mm. yeah and i think you do I notice the shift in character from that point as well and, yeah. and i also think it's kind of that moment of she's remembering that she is a woman like walking around at night time not necessarily with people that she actually knows very well I think there's that kind of element of like yeah actually, let's show that it is actually quite a terrifying thing to be a woman alone um at night unfortunately and how I think it also kind of shows a parallel of like how the boys can be carefree and just like having the best time but there's always that reminder for her that she could potentially be really unsafe mm. Yeah, exactly. And would that be one of the reasons why comedy was slightly written into it, uh, was written into the story as well, to sort of have that uh, contradiction between, obviously, the quite sad elements of the film and the, the poignant bits? Yeah, and I also think I wanted to also encapsulate just student life in general and the good parts mm. about that as well. Yeah. And I think we tried to, like, strike a balance between the two. 
um, moods. Um, and yeah, I suppose it does. It definitely puts things in perspective a bit more once you, you know, you have that first kind of half of the film where it's quite like silly and um, Dom's kind of the driving force of the film. Mm. Um, yeah, caught up the antics. And he wants to have this just fun night out. Um, and I think once once we start learning a bit more about Jen's background and what she's been through, then yeah, that definitely, um, I don't know, puts, puts things in the perspective. perspective. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. And I think it's really important that, because like, Dom is kind of trying to cling to that kind of like young student life, having fun kind of thing. And you know, his mm. friends didn't want to go out. So he's like just desperate to have a have a good night kind of thing. Um, and I think it's really important when Jen kind of puts that in perspective. Um, yeah. Because I think Jen wants to have a good night as well. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point. Like, we all want a good night. <laughs> yeah. As but, students. But there's definitely. always those limiting factors sometimes yeah. that people don't and, necessarily realise. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So also within the film, there's a big focus on uh, Wellington, am I right in thinking Wellington-based music? Hmm. Um, why did you choose to spotlight local artists within the film? Uh, oh, it's it easier just, to get I mean, the right <laughs> <laughs> It but just also. made sense. Fair. <laughs> Yeah, as the producer, <clears throat> um, I think it just made sense because um, the city itself, Wellington, I kind of feel like is its own character. Um, mm. It's really like embedded in the film. And so it didn't seem right to not have like kind of the music yeah, that totally. we actually listen to yeah. and is created around us, mm. not part of it. Um, and, and I also feel like for us as like young emerging artists, that we might as well like bring some other young emerging artists definitely, um, definitely. on board. Yeah, it was cool to support like people, a lot of the people that were musicians in the film, we knew um, pretty well. Um, yeah, and then also it was just like a good chance to reach out to some other musicians that we, um, you know, are aware of in Wellington because it is um, really small here. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> so it's also a creative- knows everyone. It's a creative city. Um, yeah. It's known for that in New Zealand. And so definitely. I think- Definitely, There's um, always things going on, um, and I think we kind of wanted to make sure that that was an element yeah. of the film. And obviously now that the film's being spread to festivals and people all around the world, it obviously mm. gives New Zealand a bit of a bit of a boost in terms of the cultural uh, aspects as well, which must be really nice for you guys to sort of be the, the champions of that in some respects. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, I think... Yeah, I think New Zealand's known, you know, for its, like, Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, and then, like, more recently, the kind of what we do in the shadows, Taika. Yeah, like what's easy stuff, elements, which is fantastic. Which is amazing, and I'm really glad that he's changing yeah. some of the representations of us um, in the media. Mm. But, um, but it's cool to yeah. have um, a student perspective of New Zealand yeah, um, yeah. Glo globally. I, I really wanted to capture huge. what Wellington feels like when you're a young person. Um because it's just, yeah, it's such a good place to be when you're a student. Yeah, it is um, really cool. you, you can see that so clearly with the vibrancy in in even just like the street scenes in the film. You can just feel like it's a good place. Uh, I've never been, but hopefully one day. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, so the film was also funded. Uh, was that crowdfunded or um, how did you go about, obviously, the, the difficult part of, bringing the film to life <laughs> yeah so um in our course basically before we got to the making of this film we did kind of like a commercial bit and so we just made a bunch of ads for different companies and and then the university was like here's your budget um so I we see. got some money from there mm. and then um we also um, launched our own crowdfunding campaign um on pledge me um, which was yeah a really interesting experience to give crowdfunding a go mm. um, and definitely like it went, exceeded our expectations yeah, so crazy. much everyone was so generous and kind um, it really yeah meant a lot to us because um, obviously we wouldn't have been able to enter into any festivals without it yeah um, that was great so yeah yeah it was an interesting I think it's a really good experience to understand how to crowdfund um, in this day and age where mm. and it's a um, big thing asking other people for money as well yeah um, 
yeah and it's, it was really humbling to see how many people were keen to like help to support this us little, yeah you know creative thing <laughs> happen, which, <laughs> Yeah, patrons of the arts. It's good to yeah. see. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like we made like a little video and stuff, which got us really excited for the shoot itself, and mm. actually probably helped us a lot once we started shooting because it gave us kind of that taster of um, how many night shoots we had <laughs> to come. <laughs> That's the tough part because uh, the yeah. way the course worked is that you, you had to do it in a five day period. That was your shoot week. week. And so we did five night shoots in a row. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and that must have been very taxing. <laughs> yes, we do over a three-week period, like work on a different film every week. Mm. And so... Wow. And Bring the Boy was in the first shoot yeah. week. So we just like <laughs> drained everyone's batteries down. Screwed <laughs> up everyone's sleep schedules. Yes, all of the night and shoots. Then, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. tough, but so it was the actually... Sunrise. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was actually really <laughs> fun. Um, yeah finishing really yeah finishing on the last day when the sun was coming up it was pretty special <laughs> for the whole, i don't know just... i was so delirious so. Yeah. <laughs> i mean you would be after five five night shifts in a row but <laughs> yeah but it was but, good it was good fun. i think from watching it you can tell that you guys had a really good time shooting it as well um and obviously the response as far as i've seen has been incredibly positive um what's the reaction been like sort of directly to you um, well, we had our screening for it, like our official u university screening mm. for it um, to last so year. Long. Started oh, last, last year. year. Started last yeah. year. And um, okay. that was really cool. We got some feedback from um, industry professionals and that sort of thing, which was nice. And I think it was pretty, generally pretty positive, which was cool. Um, and we're still, you know, we've show, we haven't showed it to everyone that we want to yet because we're waiting for the festival kind of run to see yeah. how that goes. Yeah. But um, no, it's been really positive. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. It's been it. really. Mm. I mean, it's really just such a good opportunity to get other people to see your work and then see what people think. And it's interesting, like now that so much kind of time has passed for us, I feel like we've even continued to grow ourselves as filmmakers since then. And um, you know, we're working on stuff now, and I think it's going to be so interesting to kind of compare our work throughout the like. And how how you've years. grown based on the back of all of this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so what, what is next for you guys? Is there anything that you can disclose a little bit of or is it completely under wraps? <laughs> that we can, we can yeah. do some bits, yeah. Um, we've got some music videos in the works. Um, so mm. more working with artists is really cool. Um, yeah. And also really nice opportunities to be like super creative and out there and wacky with music videos, mm. I think. Um, mm. The narrative is not as hugely important. Yeah. Um, and then also we've got the 48 hour filmmaking competition coming up, which I don't know if people overseas know about, but it's just like a, I think it's the 19th year it's been on in New Zealand and um, it's a 40, you have to make a film in 48 hours basically. And I think for a lot of like young Kiwis, it's your first taster of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And the big encouragement for me when I first did it when I was 15, I think I really got like that taste for filmmaking and was like, okay, yeah, it yeah makes it's sense. A really cool. Thing. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Mm. I think opportunities like that for young filmmakers, especially, is just something to just boost them into it and yeah, also give it a go, yeah. like you guys have. As a high school student, definitely that that festival, yeah. well, that competition so really good. grew my love for pushed filmmaking. Us, like pushes you to the limits and really challenges you in a way that um, you're never going to challenge yourself in that way. Yeah. So and and it's it forces. Really to make actually something. make something yeah. yeah instead of just talking about it and talking about it and talking yeah. about it you actually just have to it's nice to like yeah 48 hours means you don't have to like mess around in pre-production for like months you, <laughs> you just know, gotta go for it it is <laughs> <laughs> amazing um so what would you say for you guys then is the is a sort of goal so let's say the realistic goal and then the if everything goes amazingly to plan, this is the dream goal uh, with the filmmaking. Um, yeah, yeah, you can go first. What's your <laughs> What's your extreme goal? I don't know. I actually really like. I didn't. I hadn't actually done much directing before Bring the Boy properly. Like mm. um, with a, like relatively large student production, but big, like, big crew. decent crew. Um, and I really enjoyed that. So I think yeah, one day hopefully continue directing and making 
I think music videos is actually what we're both really interested in. So I think that would be something really yeah, cool to right pursue now it and feels good. something that could actually happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the big dream. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sundance. <laughs> yeah. Or something like that. yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, I guess I feel like I'm on a good trajectory, kind of, at the moment. I am working four jobs, but like most of them are film ish related. <laughs> <Kind of. laughs> um, mm. And so it feels good that we're kind of going in that direction because I think it's another element of being a filmmaker or like a creative is that kind of how do you balance um, making some money um, and creating, you know, and not mm. burning out. Um, so and it's been pretty tough i mean it's we're lucky oh, here yeah. in new zealand we're lucky here. now the opportunities are growing and a lot of productions are moving down to new zealand definitely um, but, but at the also, start of last year you yeah, know we were as in a new lockdown graduates as well. we were pretty uh disheartened <laughs> yeah, for was, a while it was tough to like come out of our course and then you know lockdown starts and <laughs> kind yeah. of lose that that momentum mo- the momentum of it yeah. yeah but okay such is life yeah um yeah i don't know i think I think we're all just figuring it out right now um, mm. as young people and as young um, creatives. Um, but yeah, I definitely have a lot of hopes for the future. And I think that what we're doing right now with music videos is like a really good direction. Um, we have a good group of um, creative friends yeah, down here. That yeah. we've kind of That's kind of an element that I feel very grateful for. And like, you know, the whole kind of like Wellington creative scene is that there's always like new people to work with and, um to share your vision which is really cool and then Um, just build that contact circle as well um obviously for when you work on different things just to be able to drag them in again is obviously a great opportunity yeah definitely yeah amazing well thank you very very much guys i really appreciate your time um best of luck best of luck next week Uh, (laughs) thank you very much